As we know, the brain is one of the most important components of the body. The heart, breathing and movements of muscles are all controlled by the brain. Its orders are sent out through a network of nerve pathways to all parts of the body. If a current, even a few milliamps, enters the body, it tends to flow along the nerve pathways and the effect can be that of the brain giving a sudden, uncoordinated, violent order. With a larger current, muscles may react so strongly that a bone may be broken. The most dangerous path for a current to follow is across the body from one hand to the other. It can disrupt the brain's orders to the heart and the respiratory muscles, and unless the circuit is broken and immediate help given, the result is death. Electricity never misses a chance to complete a circuit. So we must avoid becoming part of that circuit by keeping a barrier between us. For domestic mains voltages, a small amount of insulation is sufficient. The higher the voltage, the thicker the insulation needed. With very high voltages, because of leakage and capacity effects, a surrounding earthed metal screen is required. High voltage conductors, which are not covered by solid insulation, are kept well out of reach or they're kept behind bars in an earthed cage. But we've got to be able to get at them sometimes for maintenance. So for permanent electrical supplies, rigid safety procedures are backed up by interlock systems which block our path if we don't follow them. They're based on three important moves. First, switch off. The circuit breaker is tripped. Next, isolate. The circuit breaker is racked out. This automatically releases a switch key. And with this key and no other, the final move can now be made. To earth. The key having been locked away, a permit is issued and work can begin. Once installed, equipment of this kind isn't likely to be radically altered, so safety devices can be rigid and foolproof. But in the research laboratory, simple tests may last only a few hours and won't justify elaborate safety devices. An extra danger may be capacitors holding a lethal charge which must be dumped after switching off. So here, a safety drill must be memorized and consciously followed. This drill can best be remembered as a mnemonic. Side. S, I, D, E. Switch off, isolate, dump, earth. This mnemonic, side, helps us to remember to switch off, remember to isolate, remember to dump the charge, And finally, remember to earth through a separate circuit. Switch off, isolate, dump, earth. In contrast to simple one-man experiments, more elaborate experiments may last months or even years. They also have more men working on them and make great intellectual demands on each member of the team. Everybody must be familiar with the safety drill and there must also be sound organization and clear communication. 
The apparatus itself may involve several dozen individual circuits which must be made safe each time it's switched off. This calls for an elaborate and completely reliable safety system. Yet it must be as simple to work as possible. In this case, the experiment and its high voltage connections are contained inside a metal cage, which is earthed. To enter the locked experimental cage, one must first collect two switch keys. By switching off, isolating, dumping and earthing. Dumping and earthing in this particular experiment is automatic. As a further safeguard, an automatic bolt prevents the cage door being opened until the SIDE sequence has been completed. The key to open the cage door can now be freed from the exchange box by means of the two switch keys from the control panel. These are now trapped so that no one can switch on. But switches can go wrong and connections can fail. So as a final precaution, any HT circuit on which a man is going to work must be earthed with an earthing stick. And the stick must be left on until the job is finished. An earthing stick isn't a magic wand. Just touching a circuit doesn't make it safe. One must remember that capacitors sometimes recharge by leakage from other circuits or from their own dielectric energy. In only half an hour, they can build up sufficient charge to give a dangerous shock. One must always apply our side test to every safety system. Does the system in fact make the user switch off, isolate, dump, earth? In each research team, there is a responsible officer. Not only must he understand the circuits of the experiment, he must also make sure his team understands them thoroughly too. In experimental work, modifications are a major source of danger. So again, he must make sure that all his team know about them. These men are trained in the safety procedures for this experiment and know its layout and eccentricities. They are, in fact, the only people allowed regular access to the experiment. Their names are displayed outside the cage, together with standing orders governing procedure. Before calling in outsiders, maintenance crew for instance, the responsible officer must make his equipment safe. The maintenance crew may have to carry out work on a dozen totally different experiments, and there just isn't time for them to learn the circuits of each one. So this is how they are safeguarded. The foreman is directly responsible for his men's safety. Before allowing them to start work, he must satisfy himself that the place is absolutely safe. When the foreman's satisfied, the responsible officer signs a special permit. Only then may work begin. And while the men are inside, the permit to work is displayed at the entrance. When the job's finished, the foreman checks that his team has left nothing behind. The permit to work is cancelled and access is once again confined to the authorised personnel. So this is the pattern of safety. All high voltages are confined within an earthed cage. The experimental team remains outside, separated from dangerous voltages by the earth barrier and its rigid system of switches and interlocks. But discoveries in experimental physics are never made by rigid minds. Problems can appear during an experiment that were never anticipated when the experiment was designed. Here we have an example. A line of approach has been proved wrong. Another piece of diagnostic equipment is necessary. It's only needed for a few hours and the team can't wait for a new safety system to be designed and built around it. But changes can bring danger. 
Here's the cage where the high voltages are confined. High voltage source, new diagnostic equipment, and leads. The leads make a breach in the safety barrier and diagnostic currents pass along them. But if insulation breaks down inside the cage, high voltages will escape along the leads too. So the answer is to cage the diagnostic leads as well. In other words, screen them and earth the screening. If high voltage is short across now, they'll go to earth direct and not through the man. But however good our mechanical precautions, safety ultimately depends on the alertness of the individual, on the need to check carefully any modifications, and on the need to communicate such changes to every member of the team. Something interesting? Yes. Some new ideas on plasma disturbances. Oh? This is something we ought to look into. But we're three weeks behind already. We're going to be hard-pressed to make the Geneva conference as it is. These observations could be significant. We're not going to Geneva without looking into it. This meant a temporary modification to the experiment. Attaching a coil, and to the coil, a high-voltage pulse generator placed inside the cage and provided with its own dump switch and earthing stick. Here's the circuit. And this is how it works. On each firing, a pulse is fed through the coil. After each shot, the capacitor automatically recharges. When we want to enter the cage, the main isolator cuts off the supply and the charge is automatically dumped. The capacitor is finally earthed with the earthing stick. As the coil is earthed at one end, it's automatically safe. goose chest. How many have we done? Forty-five. Well, there should be enough. Andrew, let's try some with the coil reverse, just in case. Mm, OK, right. you better get Henry to do it. He knows all about it. Henry's away at the dentist. Well, we can't wait for him. You do it. I'll check it afterwards. Since Henry has other problems, Andrew has to sort things out for himself. What he wants to do is to reverse the effect of the coil by reversing its connections, like this. As it's awkward to reverse the connections at the coil terminal, he carefully traces the leads back to make the reversal at the other end. A moment's distraction, and he can follow the wrong cable. Working without a diagram, he fails to check the circuit. Instead of reversing the leads at these two points, he's gone to these two and reversed the whole circuit. Such a simple mistake, and the circuit works. But the coil is now isolated from Earth. Of course, Henry would have checked the coil connections before switching on, however urgent the job. Have you fixed it? Yes, sir. Uh, where's John? He had to go and see Dr. Plowman. Will you wait for him? Not if he's going to see Dr. Plowman. No, we'll press on it. Okay. Ready? Ready. Fire. Looks fine. And this is what happens now. When the capacitor recharges after each shot, the coil becomes alive. Where's 
try some with both probes in a millimeter. Okay. The dumping circuit and earthing stick are now on the wrong side of the capacitor. So dump circuit and earthing stick have no effect whatsoever. The coil remains live. Ready? Okay. Fire. That's a beauty. Try the probes in another millimeter. Right. By the time Henry returns from the dentist, tests with the reversed coil are beginning to show promising results. There's no doubt about it, it's reproducible. We're getting it, look. It's reproducible every really? time. Okay, Tony, fire. And it certainly happened when we reversed the coil. And what's the transit time? Oh, about 70 microseconds. And that's along the inner side of the tube. We ought to check the transit time along the outside of the curve. Yeah, well, we'll just shift the coil around the tube by underneath the degrees. That's right. Something to do. Oh, Henry, you're back. We want to move the coil 100 degrees on the tube, okay? All right, John. Switch off, isolate, dump and earth. But these aren't enough if something's gone wrong or the circuit's been changed. I suppose that earth is all right. Better be sure before I touch anything. What did you touch? All right. Bloody coil. The coil? Yeah. You only reversed it, didn't you? Yes, I was all. You reversed it? When? Well, this morning it was for you. Well, thanks for telling me. Oh, just a moment. Let's sort this out. Now, I made the decision to reverse the coil. And as you were away at the dentist, I asked Andrew to do it. I was going to uh, check it out. Well, that's why you were called away by Dr. Floman, so I reversed the coil and got on with the job. Now, you say you only reversed the coil. Yeah. But reversing the coil wouldn't cause this. You must have altered something else. Now, did you check the whole circuit? Well, no. Well, there was so much going on at the time that it uh, worked all right. But you so didn't I... actually check. And neither did I. And we neither of us thought to tell Henry about it when he got back from the dentist. Well, thank God I remembered that thing. Otherwise... Amen. Oh, well, you'd better go to the doctor and get a check up. Be on the safe side. Oh, let's see if we can find out what happened. Perhaps we've all learned a lesson. Mm.